I probably should have printed this in 1.6 scale. Hello custom collectors and welcome to a new video. Even though this statue was only painted with one color, this statue was my most difficult and most time consuming paint job so far. Unfortunately this model is not available for sale anymore, however you can apply the techniques I'm showing you for basically any silver surfer model. I started by printing all the base parts on my Creality Ender 3. For the planet part of the base I used translucent filament so I can later install a LED strip. All in all it took about 1.5 kilos of filament and 280 hours of printing time. Silver Surfer's body was my first print on my Elegoo Saturn and it took about 800 grams of Anycubic standard resin and 48 hours to print. Which brings us to a material cost of about 55 bucks. The first step after removing supports was to superglue all the parts. And if keys don't fit properly, just get rid of them. With some accelerator spray, the glue literally cures in 3 seconds. Now super glue can lose its strength over time and since I don't want to risk anything, I reinforce all the glued seam lines with PLA by welding the PLA together with a bit of extra filament. And it also comes in handy to remove gaps. This way you basically have one solid part in the end that will never come apart. And then it was time for sanding. I started with an orbital sander and the 120 grit sanding paper. Then I filled the holes where the keys were supposed to go with milliput and used wood filler to fill the gaps. And then I filled and sanded. By the way, I'm using a respirator for every step of this project. To sand the resin printed parts, I took a bucket of water and modified my old electrical toothbrush by cutting away the bristles and attaching sandpaper to a small piece of velcro. But if you do this as well, I wouldn't recommend to ever put that toothbrush close to your mouth again. And here you see how the print supports disappear after a few minutes of sanding. Or a few hours. Then I use two component epoxy glue to glue together the statue step by step. After the glue was cured I used Tamiya putty for the seam lines and then I sand it and sand it. Once I was happy with one section, I glued together the parts and Silver Surfer slowly grew together. And then I glued, filled, sanded, glued, filled, sanded. For the bigger seam lines I used Aves Epoxy Sculpt. Then I cut out a thin piece of wood and glued three magnets to it and to the bottom of the base. With a piece of styrofoam I closed the hole in the middle of the base. Then I created a mixture of filler, black acrylic color, sand and PVA glue and smeared that to the base. And then I strategically removed it here and there to let the light shine through. After the first layer was dry, I went in for another two or three rounds to build up more material and more surface variation. Then I took a rattle can primer to prime the surfboard and silver surface body. And I realized I needed a bigger paint booth. So I removed the plastic covers and built a cardboard extension that was big enough to fit all the parts.
After the first round of primer, the statue and the base revealed all the imperfections. So I filled and sanded, primed, sanded, filled, sanded, primed, and so on. And even though the paint booth was now big enough, you can see at the fog that the suction power of the little fan was not enough. So I built a new spray booth that you can see later as well. Then I used Ave's epoxy sculpt again to perfectly match Silver Surfer's feet to the base. And then I dry brushed some color variation with grey acrylic paint. And then it was time to use the black rattle can to paint everything in black. I went with a matte black for the base and glossy black for Silver Surfer and his board. And with the black color you now see stuff and imperfections that you didn't see with the grey. For example this tiny line where the thigh was glued to the lower torso. You can use 20 coats of primer but a crack like this will always come back to the surface. So I used my X-Acto knife to actually make it bigger and then filled it with Tamiya putty and sanded it down afterwards. And then it was finally gone and everything prepped for the final chrome paint. Now we're gonna have a short lecture about Green Stuff's chrome paint. In the third painting booth of this video. Now if you have a too thin layer it looks like this. So not, not very chromey. But with more and more layers you will achieve a perfect chrome look. Not completely there yet. Now around here is probably the sweet spot, where I should have stopped. But I'll continue for a little bit to show you what happens when it's too much. Now on camera it actually looks as if it would be perfect. However, if you use too much, you can see what happens at the very right top of the spoon. So it does start to show some darker artifacts if you use too much. But with a little bit of practice you get an awesome chrome effect with this paint. But you shouldn't use any varnish because that's what happens when you use a rattle can varnish. Unfortunately it also doesn't work to polish the paint because this is what happens. After the experimenting was done I used a 0.8mm nozzle on my airbrush to paint the statue. It took about three bottles of green stuff chrome paint to paint the body and the surfboard. Now my normal airbrush was big enough to paint the silver surfer, however for the large surface area of the surfboard I needed to upgrade to something bigger to even have a chance of getting an even surface. And while you watch me paint the surfboard I would really appreciate a like, a comment and a subscription if you like the video. And if you like to know what's next go to my Instagram. Link is in the description. I'm not 100% satisfied with the result, but it's close enough for now. The problem with the chrome paint is you see every imperfection and with such a large statue there is no way without a professional paint booth to not have a grain of dust finding its way onto your statue. And especially the large area of the surfboard. So maybe something like rub and buff would have also worked. Lastly. I hooked up the LED strip and just shoved it into the base, put all the pieces together, checked if the app was working to do the color changes and then I called it good.